Hey folks, welcome back to the Carter Redux channel. My name's Tommy, and I want to show you how easy it is to create this map inside ArcGIS Pro. Now I'm going to go through this pretty fast, um, mostly because there's really not much to this map, but if you want to follow along, I will have a step-by-step -step guide on my blog. Links to the description below. And before we jump into it, I do also want to say a special thank you to Tom Patterson for making this data available and inspiring me to make this map. Definitely check out his blog at shaderrelief.com. There's a wealth of information in there. Now you're in for a real treat. Check it out. All right. So for this map, there are two key pieces of functionality in ArcGIS Pro that we're going to focus on. The first being raster functions, which have been around for a while, and something called layer blend mode, which is new with ArcGIS Pro 2.7. Great. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get into Pro. So first things first, we need ourselves a DEM or a digital elevation model if you're not into the whole brevity thing. Next up, raster functions. To find those, we're going to click on the imagery tab, go over to raster functions, and that'll open up the raster functions pane over here on the right. We're going to look for a very specific thing called hillshade. Pull that open. We'll pass in our DEM. And in just a few simple clicks, I'll actually have a hillshade representation of that dem. Now, here's the cool thing about raster functions. Typically, we would have to run that dem through some sort of process or geoprocessing tool that would create this hillshade on disk and actually write a series of pixels to disk. And depending on the size of the dem and the resolution, that could take some time as well as you know, not an insignificant amount of space on disk. The real power of the raster function is that it's all happening on the fly. All we're doing is adding a little additional processing to the original pixels and generating that hill shade on the fly, which is really cool. Yay, technology. Awesome. Anyway, now I really like this too because you can very quickly tweak or modify these hillshade processes. And to do that, we'd right click on our hillshade layer, go down to edit function chain, and that's gonna pop open the, wait for it, raster function editor. We don't need nearly that much room for that. Thank you, pro. And for this, we're just gonna look at this hillshade process. So we have our input raster data set, which is this ASCII file. And then we have the process that we're doing to the thing over here. So we can actually come in and modify things like the azimuth or the direction of the sun or the light source and the altitude or the angle above the horizon. So we can do like 60 degrees. We can increase the Z factor, which is also known as the vertical exaggeration. Okay. And apply. And so quite quickly, we're able to just tweak and tune this to see what things we like. Now, this looks pretty cool, but I think we're going to spice it up a little bit. We're going to use something called a multi-directional hillshade. We're going to stick with our vertical exaggeration of 1.5. Watch what happens. Why? With a multi-directional hillshade, as the name implies, we're actually going to simulate multiple light sources and blend all those together into a single image. I love this. This looks great. Next up, let's do some layer blend modes. Get rid of that for right now. So blend modes actually you apply it to a layer and it'll combine those pixels with the layer beneath it. So that's why I dragged this hill shade down here because we're going to apply under the appearance tab, layer blend. We're going to apply the overlay blend mode to our dem layer. And that looks pretty good. Let's add a splash of color. For this, I'm going to cheat a little bit and we're going to use a style that I already created, a color ramp that I've already created. Uh, I took a Default one, I chopped off the upper end of the colors, modified the greens a little bit, moved these stops around a little bit. Go back to our map and apply that now. Here, go over to our symbology pane. Select our color ramp. And that looks interesting, but I was really kind of hoping this green stuff would be down here in the valley. We can fix that though, and that's pretty easy. Just click this invert button, and there you have it. Now it still looks all right, but I think we can do a little bit better. We're going to tweak the histogram a smidge. So we're just going to 
scooch that bottom number up a little bit. And if I drag this top value, you can see the image is actually updating on the fly. We'll snug that right in there. And if you want to get very specific, if you're like me and your neuroses kicks in and you want nice, pretty round numbers, just type in 2400. Now that looks really cool. I like this color scheme a lot, but kind of kind of lost a bunch of detail down here in the valley, which I'm not not thrilled about. And right along the canyon rim here, it looks really dark. And for this data set, these landforms here are really uh, that's the that's the main attraction here. Got all these really fascinating landforms in here called hoodoos that are just getting lost in that those dark regions. We're going to take our hill shade, control click, drag that above our dem, and then we're going to apply the luminosity blend mode to that. That looks much better. We kind of tone down the higher elevations. We brighten up the canyon rim quite a bit, and we bring back all that gorgeous detail of this valley region down here. So here's before, here's the original dem. Here's that dem colorized with an overlay. And here's that second hill shade with the luminosity applied. So I think the map is pretty much done. Next, we need to apply some pretty text. For that, we'll jump over to our layout. What I really like about text in Pro is that you're not just stuck with stroke and fill. You can actually treat text as if it were a polygon. So if we go over to the text properties, go to text symbol, text fill symbol, and you go to format polygon symbol. Here we can actually bring in multiple different symbol layers. Here we had the default uh, solid fill, which I changed to a gradient fill. And then I just added an additional fill layer for up here. So for the gradient fill, this is just a 95% uh, transparent white, transitioning to a completely transparent white, 100%. And this has sort of a, it's kind of hard to see in the preview, so let me just apply this. And it has this sort of inner glow effect. And I just like that, it just adds a little bit of visual interest to it. Oops, that text just stand out just a little bit, but it's not enough. So this is why I needed that additional solid fill. And this is just a 40% white fill. We hit apply that gets it a nice, nice little contrast. And I like that it just helps it stand out a little bit better from the background without completely masking it. I like that the terrain actually shows through the text a little bit. We're going to use that same layer copy method, select our text layer, hold down control and drag. We'll duplicate that layer and then we'll grab that, drag that down to the bottom. And then you can just double click on this text box, highlight the text that you want, National Park. We just got to align that. So we'll align the page and align center. And that's it. Our text is done. Last step. We want to share it as a PNG. So we click on the share tab, click on export layout, choose PNG type. And off we go. And there we have it. For those of you brave souls that follow along, nice job. Well done. Um, feel free to experiment with those blend modes and see if you know, perhaps there's different combinations that you like or the different hill shade properties. Pl play around with it. You know, that's, that's part of the fun, just seeing kind of where the data takes you. Um, if you do post something out there, just uh, make sure you use the hashtag Bryce Canyon Challenge. I'd really love to see what you come up with. Well, folks, thanks for sticking around. I think that'll do it for now. Take care and uh, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.